Hey, this is Beth McKinney for facepaint.com and today we're going to look at a stencil palette for airbrushing. Now before you make a stencil palette, you need to know what designs you're actually going to be using on your menu, what you're going to offer. I would really suggest that you choose some designs and not all of your designs. Personally, I have a lot of stencils, especially the wiser stencils, because I really like those. And I can't offer them all or it's going to slow me down quite a bit at an event. So what I do is I make menus that are comprised of the most popular designs that I have found personally to use and I'll put those up. So this is my menu. It's got some real popular things like the tiger, some sports stuff, some Americana, some kind of love and some words because teens I found especially like those. Some nautical things with the, um, the anchor, snakes are always popular, motorcycles, flowers and horses and spider. So these are really popular choices. So I put those on my menu and uh, I'm going to use that. Now I'm going to fill my stencil palette with the stencils that will work with these designs. Just to show you what it's made of, it's two pieces of foam board. I actually cannibalized one of my displays in order to create this one. But I have the two pieces of foam board and I've covered them with clear contact paper to protect them from moisture and I also used packing tape and went around the edges to also make sure that it's as sealed as I can make it from moisture because moisture is what will destroy anything like this for using for display. Then I also added a seam in the center again using packing tape so I can fold it because otherwise it's hard to transport it. So although that isn't necessary it is helpful in keeping it small and portable. Um, for the pockets I used photo protector pages and I cut them in pieces. So these were, I think, the 3x4 sizes, and these are the 4x6 sizes. And I used double-sided tape, put it on the back, and I mounted them on this front area. Now if you look closely at these, you'll notice that the pockets aren't exactly the way they originally were, because normally they would, both sides would come up to the top and it would protect whatever is in there. However, that was not going to work well for stencils. I had to have a way of getting at them easier because some of them are smaller. So I cut, trimmed away the top and I slid a picture inside so if I was missing a stencil I would know what should be in there. And I put a piece of packing tape on the front as a tab so I could pull that pocket open and get in there and get my stencil out. Try to make sure that the larger stencils have larger pockets and the smaller ones have the tiny ones. I even placed some little pockets in front. Like the leaf is a tiny, tiny element. So I'm instead of using these big 3x4 pockets, which were a little large for that, I made a smaller pocket on the front and just again with the same plastic and some double-sided tape just to fix it to the front and I could get to very tiny elements more easily. I also have some extra pockets placed on the front. So these pockets are doubled. There's the larger pocket that's vertical behind it, and then there's a 4x6 pocket on the front that's lower. So if I pull the one out in the front, you can maybe see it a little bit easier. There's, it's a double pocket because there were just more stencils than I had um, room for just using the back pockets. It's easier. Now, in order to keep this from blowing, obviously this my stencil palette is not very heavy. So in order to keep it still and steady at an event, I have a heavy duty easel, which I'm going to mount it on so that it will, and it will hold on to the top and the bottom and keep it from moving. And if necessary, I can use bungee cords to also clamp that down even more so that the wind can't take the whole stencil palette away. One final thing on your stencil palette is that you need to make sure that while it's in transit, if you load it at home, that you don't lose your stencils. In order to do that, I would suggest if you have a, a folding stencil, that you clip it with a binder clip. I've used a piece of plastic here to distribute that tightness so that it doesn't crush my foam. And um, it also tells me which way is up, because if I turn this upside down, the stencils will fall out and I'll lose them. So I don't want that to happen. So this has a dual purpose. Helps keep it more secure, helps me know which way is up so I don't accidentally turn it upside down. 
Thanks for joining me and learning a little bit more about how a stencil palette can speed up your airbrushing, especially when you're in an outside venue, not with high wind, but with a little bit of a breeze that might blow your stencils away. It's meant to be something that will keep them safe and help you work faster. If you'd like to subscribe to more videos by facepaint.com, please click the subscribe button below and please leave a comment. We'd like to hear from you. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.